class, this is an example of a line balancing problem. So what we have, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the, the, the layout of the assembly line. And we have, we know what the procedure is, and the procedure has been broken down into 10 different work elements. And we know how long each of those work elements take, and those are given in seconds. And the other thing that we know is we know immediate predecessors. We know the order in which the tasks need to be completed. For example, task A, work element A, takes 40 seconds, and it can start whenever. There are no immediate predecessors. Tasks B and C, they cannot start until A is done. D and E cannot start until B is done, and so on. So from that, we can lay out what jobs can start and what jobs need to be completed before other jobs, and so on. Um, another important thing to notice is, is we have a given demand. We need to produce 60 units per hour. And so we're gonna, we, we're gonna need to set up the assembly line so we don't violate any of these precedence um, restrictions. And we also still need to meet our demand. So probably the best place to start is to create a precedence diagram. So from that, we look at these tasks and we, we build the diagram of, of the order in which the tasks can be, can be performed. So A is first. A doesn't have any predecessors. It can start whenever. Now, once A is done, B and C can get started. And A, let me write the times down. A is 40 seconds. B is 30 seconds. C is 50 seconds. Okay, so D, D can start once B is done. And D is 40 seconds. E can start once B is done. So we can start D and E, and E is six seconds. And then F can start once C is done. And F is 40. And then G, G can start when C is done. So we can put G down and G is 15 seconds. And then we have H. Well, H needs D, E, and F. So all three of those have to be done before H can begin. And H is 20 seconds. And then we have I and I needs G to be done. And I is 18. And then finally, we have our last task, J. Everything has been done. H and I are complete, so J can begin, and it's 30 seconds. That's our precedence diagram. OK, so now let's go back to looking at um, our demand and you know how many stations should we have? and so on. So in order to calculate all of those things, we're gonna first start with calculating what's called the tack time. And the reason is, is tack time is the pace of the assembly line. So we're gonna, you know, put out so many units per unit of time, the pace in order to meet the demand. So tack time is calculated as available time divided by the demand. Available time divided by demand. Well, available time is, if we're, let's take a look at our demand. It's 60 units per hour, 60 units per hour. So within an hour, we've got 3,600 seconds. And the reason I'm choosing seconds is tech time is often calculated in seconds, but also that our, our task times are given in seconds. So within that one hour or 3,600 seconds, we need to make 60 units, 60 units. So our pace of the assembly line is equal to 60, is equal to 60. So every, every um, 60 seconds, then we are putting off, um, the, the assembly line needs to move in order to meet the demand. So tack time then, let's, tack time then is 60 seconds or one minute 
we're putting out a, a unit. So pump, pumping that out off the assembly line every 60 seconds a unit, then we can meet demand. Now, what else we're gonna calculate is the theoretical minimum number of workstations, because we wanna allocate this work into, into stations that are gonna move at the pace of tack time. So we're gonna do the minimum number of stations. And we're gonna calculate that as the total task time and then divided by tack time. And if you think about it, that's actually logical tack time. That makes sense that, that we look at how long it takes to produce one of those units and then the pace that it has to work at, and that's gonna tell us the stations, the number of stations that we'll have to move this through. So I didn't, I didn't um, tell you, but I've already added up the total number. So if I add up the total task time for those, it's 289 seconds. So that is the total task time, 289. And then our tack time is 60. So that is equal to, let's see, 289 and 60 divide is 4.8167. Well, we can't have 0.8167 of stations. So we have five stations as the minimum. All right, so at best, we're going to allocate these tasks into five stations. And those stations are gonna be able to move at tack time pace and we will meet our demand. That doesn't mean it's a balance line, but we'll meet our demand. So what we wanna find then is the, the most balanced, the most efficient line. So that's, that's kind of the goal of, of this whole process. So I'm gonna start off with just saying, all right, the minimum of stations we can have is five. So let's go ahead and write our stations out. Stations, and we, can, we know we're gonna have a minimum of five. Five, and without much thought, I know station A has to go, I'm sorry, task A has to go in station one because nothing else can start until task A is complete. So I'll put that there and it takes 40 seconds. But now what next? Now what should I put next? I'm gonna go and mark this as green as it's been assigned. Well, it turns out <clears throat> that we have some rules that are commonly followed in industry. So those rules are, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna talk about four of them. Okay. Shortest processing time. Least processing time. Most number of followers. And then least number of followers. So we're gonna do, I'll do an example of this one and this one, and then I'll guide us into how those others, I'll show you so you'll see what those other two, how those are, are, are used. But we're gonna start off, let's start off anyway with shortest processing time. Let's do that one first. So we are going to use that rule to decide how we're gonna allocate those tasks, these 10 tasks to the stations. So again, we already put A there because nothing else can start till A is done. So I'm gonna look at, well, what are the possible tasks that I can assign? Because I've got two things that I have to think about. I have to think about precedence, precedence. And the other thing that I have to think about is that I've got to keep it moving at tack time. So in order for that to happen, the stations must be, each station must be less than or equal to tack time or 60 seconds. So I'll bring up those two points again and again as we move through this example. So in terms of candidates, I cannot violate precedence, cannot violate it. So the only candidate tasks that I could put into a station is B and C. So if I'm going to use the particular rule, shortest processing time, then I look at my candidate tasks. B has 30 seconds, 
C at 50 seconds and I choose the shortest one. So I'm gonna choose B. So I would choose B and it's 30 seconds. So I, I did not violate precedence, but that total 70 seconds, which means that's greater than the tack time, which means that station isn't gonna move according to pace in order to meet our demand. So we can't do that. We can't put B there. So we have to create a new station in order to ensure that the, the assembly line is moving where it can meet demand. So B is gonna be assigned to station two and that was 30, 30 seconds. Okay, so now let's mark B as it's been assigned and let's look at candidate tasks. So C can go in, but now since B is done, D can go in and E can go in. Can't do, no other, no other tasks can go in, just D, E, and C. So using shortest processing time, we've got D at 40, E at six, and C at 50. The shortest one is six, so that's E. So E and it's six, so I'm at, 36 seconds right now. So let's let's continue. Let's mark E as, okay, we've entered it. So any more candidates? Can't do H because D's not done. So, so no, we're at the same candidates. We've got D and we have C. Using shortest processing rule, the next one to go in would be D. But we can't put D in there because 36 and 40 is 76 and we exceed our tack time. Can't do it, so we move D instead to station three. So that's at 40. Okay, so now let's mark D as entered and take a look at candidates. So do we have any new candidates? Well, H still cannot, cannot be done until F is complete. So our we don't have any candidates other than C. So we'll look at C and we can't put C here because that would be 50, that'd be 90 seconds, exceeds our, our max of six. So we have to put C in station four and that's 50. Okay, so now C has been assigned. He's assigned and let's open up and see what we've got for candidates now. So F is a candidate and G is a candidate. Using shortest processing time. We've got F at 40, G at 15, so we're gonna put in 15. Cannot put it in station four because that would be 65. So I'm gonna put G in station five at 15. And we'll mark that one as assigned. So now we have, um, we have F, that we can do, cannot do H yet, but can we do Y? Well, we can, we can do I because it just needed G to be done. So shortest processing time, F is 40, I is 18. So we'll enter I. So I and it's 18, so we're at 33. So, so I can go there. So now let's mark that as, as I is entered. And now let's look at candidates. So J can't do it, H can't do it. So there is, there's only one possible job and that's F. And it's 40, so 40 would be 73, cannot put it in station five. So we're gonna have to go to station six. So F and that's 40. Okay. And then we will mark that one as entered. And now our candidates, well, can't do J, so now we've got H. H is the H is our only candidate. And so we'll put H in and does H work? It does since it's 20 and that puts us at 60, which is okay. We can be at 60. And then we have um, station seven and that's going to be let's see, station seven, and we just have J left, and that is 30, okay? Okay, so this represents a possible layout where we did not violate precedence, and we didn't violate tack time, so we can meet our, 
we can meet the demand. But we don't know yet if this is an efficient layout or if we could do better. Is our line balanced or not? And what we're gonna calculate is a measure of efficiency. And the measure of efficiency is gonna be the sum of all the task times. And the, divided by the actual number of stations. We could have a theoretical efficiency where we divided by the, the theoretical number of stations, but this is the actual efficiency. So the actual number of stations times the tack time. So in this case, sum of task times was 289 actual number of stations that was spread into seven stations and 60 seconds for each station. And that gives us um, an efficiency of when you work that out, 68.8%, 68.8. So not great, is it? You can tell that that's probably, we, we hope that we can do better. And maybe using one of the other assignment rules, um, other than shortest processing time, maybe we would identify a layout that does better. So that's efficiency. And then we have what we call a balance delay. And that's one minus the efficiency. One minus efficiency. Let's see. So equals one minus six, eight, eight. And so that equals 0 0.312 or 31.2 balance delay. So, um, you know, we would think of our efficiency, we would, you know, prefer to see that in the 90s, certainly the high 80s, maybe 90s. And so 68, you know, seems like maybe there's room for, for um, improvement. And we can tell that because each of the stations, this one has a total of 40. This has a total of 36, a total of 40 a total of 50. This one has 33, 60, and then 30. So we can see that we're not at the ideal um, 60, and we've got some stations that would be waiting, not working, and so not a, not a tremendously balanced line. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop this video. This is shortest processing time, and then I'll start a new one to show you longest processing time.